Floyd mentioned ACA, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. That's so last year. Nancy Pelosi's new push at rebranding that just might have you well regurgitating. The Obamacare bills on the floor tomorrow in the House. Some Democrats have indicated they might be open to supporting them. How strongly are you pushing members to vote against them? And does it start to become a sign of, of weakening support if, if more Democrats start jumping? Absolutely, Absolutely not. First of all, uh, it's called the Affordable Care Act. Uh, if that's what you're referencing, uh, you know, they are going after the Affordable Care Act. Someone has name issues. Anyway, Nancy really doesn't fancy calling it Obamacare. But to be fair, she never has. It's kind of interesting. We were looking through all the tapes, even though the president doesn't have a problem with it. Because uh, he doesn't have problems with it. Just like I call this show Cavuto Care when it's a good show. We, we, <laughs> we call it like Hannity Care when it's a bad show. Anyway. Uh, Nancy Pelosi really doesn't care for the name, but uh, Dr. Ben Carson says that pretty much tells you all you need to know. And to be fair, Dr. Ben, she has never called it that, and I don't know whether that's a, an ego thing or whatever, and that she you know, has been claiming that she's responsible for a lot of what's in there, and not just the president. But, but leaving that aside, whatever you call it, it to me it looks like uh, a disaster. Well, you know, uh, if, if I have a short tree and I tell you to call it a tall tree, you're probably going to have trouble calling it a tall tree for a while. And uh, if you have an act that's not affordable and you want to call it affordable, you may have a little trouble with that too. But, you know, it's his signature uh, accomplishment. You know, Reagan had something called Reaganomics, uh, that True. Romney Care, uh, Bush's War, even though both parties sanctioned it. Uh, so, you know, I, this is something that goes on with all presidents. There's no, nothing special about yeah, this. Yeah, but I mean, Pelosi, at least she does make a point there, because there are a lot of ways you could attach her name to it, like Pelosi, he a later. Um, so, like, there are a lot of ways, <laughs> to, but I, I digress. Uh, what's going to happen, though, now? No matter how they're looking at rebranding it or reselling it or repackaging it, and I guess during both the Super Bowl and the upcoming Olympics, they're going to be selling the heck out of it. Um, you have to have something attractive to sell, and your argument has been, they don't, but, but they also argue that eventually they will. What do you say? Well, what will eventually happen is that the employer mandate will kick in. What we've seen so far is minor compared to what's going to happen after that kicks in, in terms of people losing their care. And, you know, we've had, uh, what, 2.1 million people uh, sign up uh, in the exchanges uh, for the non-Medicare or my Medicaid uh, aspect. But 6.3 people have lost insurance. That number is going to skyrocket. It's going to be chaos. But that's only part of the problem. The other part of the problem is you've injected a lot more people into a system, and you're asking uh, practitioners to take care of them. Uh, where are they going to get these practitioners from? The primary care doctors are already overwhelmed. Uh, and you're going to add more people and ask them to be seen in a timely fashion? I don't think that's going to happen. You know, not to mention the fact that you look at the ineptitude that was manifested in the rollout of this program. What makes anybody think that all of a sudden everything's going to be okay? All of a sudden there's going to be great competence and efficiency. Why would there be? This is a government program. It's one of the reasons that I've argued so strenuously that what we need to do is sit down and figure out a way that we can return health care to the patient and to the physician. There are ways to do that for much less, much less money. And there's absolutely no reason that it can't be done in a way that is nonpartisan and that works for all the American people. Why do we have to make it into a partisan issue? There's so much immaturity in this whole thing. It, it really is sickening. Um, you know, though, Doctor, one of the things that you hear from the White House that those who are championing uh, Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act or Pelosi CLA or whatever is, is that it's eventually going to go their way. It's going to get better as time goes on. And like any new product launch that has a bump along the way, it finds its, its footing and then and, and it will be off to the races. And they point out to the, the increase in the number of people signing up and, and uh, that the costs will eventually uh, start coming down. You, you don't sound like you buy that. No, I would say uh, certainly don't hold your breath on that. But uh, again, uh, what I've said many times before, the reason that this is so inefficient and so ineffective 
is that it's a big government program designed to increase the power of the government in our lives. And, you know, we still have time, the American people, we still have time to wake up from our somnolence and to do something about it. But it's going to require educating ourselves so that we can't be so easily led by slick politicians and by a media that has largely forgotten its responsibility to the liberty of the people of this nation. Doctor, doesn't also take a lot of people really ticked off. In other words, more than 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 than, than what it seems to be the case now, because the mainstream media tell it, yeah, there are a lot of people who have been just sort of discombobulated and shaken up here, but not nearly in the numbers that you and I know to be the case. And that come. If that group stands up and says, per this bank survey that was done this week, that shows 47 percent are having more taken out of their checks for health care and uh, sure. about a same amount are seeing higher deductibles as a result of health care, th then they, they do rise up, right? Right. Uh, well, there's, there's a lot of ways that this is going to affect the average person. I was talking to a medical device representative the other day, and uh, I said, how is the, uh, the Obamacare Act affecting you with the increased uh, taxes on medical devices? And she says, well, it, it's not really affecting us much because we've just built that into the price and passed it on. So all of those things are hitting all the average people. The people don't realize all these taxes that are coming through this, this is the most massive tax increase in the history of America, probably the history of the world. And, but it's all being done under the covers. That's the problem. All of this is being done under the covers. I can see it. You can see it. People in the know can see it. But people who aren't really paying close attention to what's going on, it's very easy to pull the wool over their eyes. And that's why it's so important for people to begin to educate themselves, to get together, to talk about what do they want for the future? What do they want for their children and their grandchildren? Are they going to hand over a country that is in decline, that is taken over by the government? Are they going to hand their freedoms over? Are they going to forget about the fighting that our grandparents did, that the patriots did in order to provide freedom? I hope not. Very good stuff. Ben Carson, Happy New Year. Thank you, my friend. Happy New Year, Yeah.